Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Arias and today we'll be talking about Invite stock. In this video, I'm going to introduce you fully to the company Invite and get you started on your research. We'll dive into the fundamentals of the business and everything that entails. I'll cover the recent deals with PacBio and the acquisition of Archer DX. We'll talk about their three-year growth targets as well as their long-term growth into their total addressable market and whether or not I think they can 10x by 2031. Most importantly, I will go through what I call the Super Bowl case, which I think can drive a lot of value for Invite going forward. Finally, we will go through how I approach a stock if I think it's overvalued, what my cost basis is, and what prices I will buy more. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I'm posting a video every Friday, so hit the bell button if you want to be notified. And without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's start with what Invite does. They're a genetics testing company that provides a variety of tests that I will detail in further in a few slides. Their full business evolution that they have detailed in their 2020 10K, which is linked in the description with all the other resources I used in making this video, starts with making genetic testing more affordable and accessible with faster turnaround times, which they are are already well on the way to doing. The second step is sharing genetic information on a global scale to advance science and medicine, which they are in the process of doing now. The third and final step is to build secure and trusted genome management infrastructure. More value will be added at each stage of the business for Invite to capture, as they moved from a provider of a commodity to the provider of an extremely sticky customer-facing service. They will soon not only be going after genetic testings, but also liquid biopsies via their acquisition and integration of Archer DX, which gives them a huge market for them to grow into. Here is a slide from their Q4 earnings deck, and it shows this business plan and their evolution through it. Currently, they are developing a genome network by making acquisitions to expand their content and service offerings, and sharing genetics to lead to better patient outcomes, which builds on their progress in making genetics testing more affordable and partnerships with their industry peers that increase the utilization of genetic testing. One last thing I take from this slide is the size of the sharing genetics to improve patient care section, which I think indicates their thought that the best is yet to come with regard to growth. Let's now take a look at what their current tests are that are offered on Invite's website and their prices. The first screen is a carrier screen which checks 288 genes to see if you carry a genetic disorder that could be passed on to your child and costs $250. Next is a genetics health screen which tests 147 genes to assess your risk of developing an inherited form of cancer or cardiovascular disease and more and costs $350. The next two tests are split out from the last test, each testing your inherited risk of cancer or cardiovascular disease and each costing $250. The final listed tests are diagnostic tests for the individuals with history of family disease and the costs for these vary. This is another slide from your Q4 earnings deck and it shows their projected total addressable market for each of these age groups. I'm not sure if this is just the US or worldwide because they do have international operations or for what time frame it is, but I'm confident it will grow over the next decade. They are projecting the genetics testing opportunity for those ages 0 to 17 to be 26 billion, for those 18 to 40 to be 5 billion, for those 41 to 60 to be 60 billion, and for those 65 and up to be 63 billion billion for a total projected market size of 154 billion. This here is also from their Q4 earnings deck and it is their growth flywheel. Starting from the bottom where they drive volume which attracts partners and lowers costs, this lowers prices for consumers and in combination with expanded content improves the customer experience which in turn drives volume and around the flywheel goes again. Now let's talk about the PacBio deal which came out in early January. This deal is to develop a production scale high throughput sequencer leveraging PacBio's long read hi-fi sequencing technology. PacBio who I have a video on which I'll link in the description is is the leader in long read technology, which is superior to short read in every way except for cost, which is falling quickly, and this deal aims to decrease the cost even further. One of the benefits of long read technology is that it gives a look at methylation, and this, in combination with the Archer acquisition, shows Invite's commitment to tackling cancer in the future. Long read technology is also just more accurate than short read, and I think that an investment in this technology shows the ability to look forward and invest in developing technologies that will be made relevant in the future by this investment. The stated aim of the deal is to deliver a clinically relevant whole human genome at substantial less than $1,000. I've gotten an indication from these er recent earnings calls that they have multiple milestones in this deal and that they are aiming to have the first development in less than five years. However, the details of this deal are not totally clear, but Invite will pay to finance most of the development of the technology and then receive preferential pricing going forward for a specified period of time. PacBio also just announced a $900 million convertible note deal with SoftBank, so liquidity will not be an issue for them. Long term, I see Invite doing a full sequence every time someone sends in a sample for testing, no matter what the test. They then can store the genome and use it for any future needs of the customer at little incremental cost to them. A complete, affordable, long-range genome is going to provide the best experience for the customers long-term, and I love to see Invite investing to advance this future. Next, let's talk about their second recent deal, which is with their acquisition of Archer DX, which just closed last quarter. As I have already mentioned, Archer represents Invite's entry into an absolutely gargantuan market that, most importantly, will be very positive for humanity over the coming decades. Archer is currently developing cancer monitoring and cancer diagnostic products. Cancer monitoring will allow for non 
non-invasive monitoring of reoccurrence in patients who have already beat cancer. While cancer diagnostic products will allow providers to identify alterations of current cancer and treat that better. However, it's still meant to be used as a companion diagnostic. They have one monitoring product for a non-invasive small cell lung cancer that is already commercialized in Japan and a few more in the pipeline. They also have products that they currently sell that are available enabling various cancer research. Archer had a billable volume of 50,000 units in Q4, while Invitae did over 180,000 units. While I like this deal for sure, I really want to see them move into the multi-cancer screening market. ARK Invest, who owns Invitae in both their flagship ARK-K fund, where it is the top 10 holding, and ARK-G fund, where it is the number 14 holding, but was the number one holding multiple times in the past year, projects the multi-cancer screening market could be worth $150 billion in the U.S. alone at maturity. This obviously provides huge long-term upside for Invitae. Now, let's talk a little about their CEO, Sean George. He's one of the co-founders of Invitae, and all of you know I love a founder-led company. However, he owns a relatively small portion of the company at just a 0.35% stake, and I think this is primarily due to him having to endure massive dilution as he has sold relatively little over the past five years. He has a PhD from UC Santa Cruz in molecular genetics, and this points to him having an understanding of the product from the base level, which I think is an imperative for a company to be a disruptor in this space. A while back, I listened to a talk he gave at Stanford in 2015, and I was very impressed with his foresight and culture building for the long term, and I think it is revealing that five years ago, when his company was just barely public, he was already thinking about how to build a successful long-term culture. I'm also glad to hear, not just from Sean, but from the other management, anytime they talk about their future, their focus is never on the short term, but always on the long-term goal. And this is where you have to be focused if you're going to invest in Invitae. Management understands the massive shift to genomics-based medicine, and they have a plan to capitalize on it, and that is what will drive value for Invitae. Now let's talk about the risks real quick before we get into the financials. And as with any high-growth company with a huge market to capture, but with not a whole lot captured today, there are plenty of risks. The biggest risk that I always mention is execution risk. If they fail to execute on their plans for growth and don't capture outsized market share in Gen X testing, then this valuation will not be justified because a lot of growth is already built in. Moving on to another factor of this execution risk is the competition risk. Invitae is going after a huge market and so are a bevy of other worthy competitors with more and better established resources. Invitae will have to win market share despite this competition to justify their valuation. Finally, there are also market risks of course, but these are short term in nature. In fact, I would love to see a market sell off, kind of like we're seeing right now, which would hurt Invitae more than others because it is a richly valued, fast growing company and I could then buy more at lower levels. However, there is some risk with Invitae because they will have to dilute existing shareholders to raise capital to grow as quickly as they would like in the future. And if the market values their stock at a lower price due to the market conditions, they would have to dilute more to raise the same amount of money. Now I'll give you an introduction to their financials. They have a current market cap of $7.5 billion and a share price of $39. Last week, they reported full year 2020 revenue of $279 million, representing 29% growth year over year despite the impact of the Rona. They also have reported Q4 2020 revenue of $100.4 million, representing 51% growth year over year. In a moment, I'll show you a slide that shows how bad the Rona impacted their business. Their average cost for goods sold was $227 in Q4, while their average price paid per unit sold was $442, which represents about a 45% non-GAAP gross margin. And this shows that they are profitable on a unit scale. They have $795 million in cash and equivalents on their balance sheet, but also $450 million in debt, leaving them with a net cash position of $345 million. They had cash burn of about $75 million in Q4, but I would expect them to raise more cash within the next few years as they invest heavily to go after a long-term huge market opportunity. In terms of guidance, they said on their Q4 call that they would like to get gross margins above 50% in 2021, and I think they are talking about gap gross margins, which would imply about a 5% improvement. They have also said that they expect to grow at 50-60% to 60 over the next few years, but expect growth to come in at closer to 50% this year. Here's a quick look at their revenue and billable volume per quarter up to the most recent quarter. As you can see, the Rona had a big impact on both Q1 and even more so on Q2, so look for big growth rates in the first two quarters of this year as they lap that lower growth. They also might be going against tougher comps in Q3 and 4 of next year, as volume might have been pushed from Q1 and Q2 of 2020 to Q3 and Q4. So don't be alarmed if this causes slightly more lumpy growth going forward. Now let's look at some possible revenue projections for Invitae, but before we get into it, these are not predictions and will be far off from the real numbers. It is not financial advice, and I'm only using it as a way to try to get a handle on how to value this company. I will start with their $279 million in full year 2020 revenue, and have this compounding at a 50 to 60% rate over the next few years in line with guidance. From there, I have their growth slowing steadily and ending at 27% rate from 2030 to 2031. These growth rates would imply $12.34 billion in 2031 revenue, which is a substantial increase from their $279 million in 2020 and would represent 46% year-over-year growth from 2020 to 2031. While these projections are pretty aggressive, I think it is in reach because they have a giant market to tackle and I believe in their growth strategy to tackle it. Now, I'm going to try to get a little context on how we should value Invitae. To get these comps, I just googled medical testing companies and clicked on the first link and got the first five public companies. They were Sanofi, Quest, Abbott, Charles River Labs, and 
LabCorp. And here are their price to sales ratio, profit margin, and price to earnings ratio according to Yahoo Finance. I will concede that these companies may not be the best comps because they will be in different stages of growth than Invitae will. However, I think that if anything, these comps will serve as a conservative estimates and Invitae will have better margins and be valued higher due to the quality of their business and increased room to go even still in 2031 due to their total adjustable market. Of these five comps, the average PS ratio is 3.6, the average profit margin was about 17%, and the average PE ratio was about 27.2. Let's see how those numbers would value Invitae. With projected revenue in 2031 of 12.3 billion, if you value it at a 3.6 PS ratio like the comps on the last slide, the implied 2031 value would be 44.4 billion, implying a 19% Kyger over the next 10 years. I think this ratio is pretty conservative considering Vitae's potential growth, but let's move on to valuing the company based off their earnings. If they have a profit margin similar to that of the comps on the last slide of 17% off of 12.3 billion in sales, that would yield over 2 billion in profit. If we're applying a PE ratio we found on the last slide of 27, it would value the company at $56.7 billion, implying a 22% CAGR over the next 10 years. These estimates don't make it a 10x in 10 years. However, if we apply a little bit more aggressive ratios and margins to account for the expansive market that they will be going after, it would easily be a 10x. For example, if they get a 7 PS ratio with the same sales, they would be valued at over 80 billion, or if they get a 20% profit margin and get a 30 PE ratio, both of which I think are reasonable, and both of which would result in a 10x in 10 years. We'll talk about this Super Bowl case in a moment, but I still think that the market is not fully pricing in the upside that comes with the potential genome management part of their business. Now let's look at another way of valuing Invitae, and that is by their total addressable market. Invitae projects their total addressable market across all of the ages in the US to be $154 billion. Now, there's a bit of ambiguity there because I haven't heard a specific time frame for these projections, or if this is around the world or just a UX specific estimate. Whatever it is, it's obviously a huge market. Consider this, if Invitae were to capture just 10% of this market by 2031, they would have already outgrown our revenue estimates from a couple slides back by 3 billion. If they were to capture 20% of this market by 2031, they would have over doubled our revenue projections and be at a $30 billion revenue runway in 2031. I also can't imagine this market won't expand massively over the next decade. For example, if their TAM were to grow modestly for a booming industry at 10% for the next 10 years, they would have a market size of nearly 400 billion in 2031. If they were to capture just 5 or 10% of this, they would be at 20 to $40 billion in revenue. I hope you're starting to see how large this market is for them to grow into, and I think that there is an opportunity for huge upside in that. Additionally, ARC projects that by maturity, the total adjustable market for cancer screening will be $150 billion in the US alone. Now, this is already baked into Invitae's estimates under the ages 40 to 65 with risk screening. However, it shows just how much opportunity the Archer acquisition provided for Invitae. Now, moving on to what I call the Super Bowl case, which I think presents even more upside than what just comes with their huge market TAM, and this is their genome management potential. Here's that case laid out. The first step is developing a sequencing machine that is cheap, accurate, and sequences the whole human genome, and they have set this in motion with the deal with PacBio. Once this is put into effect, each time Invitae produces a test, they will collect the genome with the associated data. After enough time and tests, they will collect enough data to run machine learning algorithms on this to discover how genetics will affect us, and develop treatments based off these discoveries. There will be some privacy issues for sure that come with collecting genomes, however, due to the societal benefit that comes with solving disease, I think they will be able to work through these issues. Consumers will be incentivized to allow the use of their genome because it increases the chances that they will be able to benefit from a discovery pertaining to it. I think this would make Invitae worth hundreds of billions of dollars, if not trillions. I don't think that the market yet understands the amount of true cures that can come from the genomic space, and it is thus being undervalued massively still in the market today. As I am going through recording this video, their data setup is starting to remind me of some of the great data companies today, like Tesla and Google. Tesla drivers are buying cars from Tesla and then driving them around collecting data, allowing Tesla to develop vision-based autonomy. Google users are using the search engine because it's the best for the job, and while they're at it, they're training it how to do its job better. I'm starting to think Invitae might be in a similar position. They will be paid by their customers for their tests, while Invitae collects and analyzes their information surrounding the tests to develop cures. I'm not sure how this will play out, but I definitely see some potential for the next great AI flywheel with Invitae. Finally, my conclusions. My investing strategy can be summed up to say, own growth companies at reasonable valuations with huge TAM. Invitae fits this bill perfectly, as they have an opportunity for lots of growth ahead into a booming market opportunity. I think they have the strategy and the team to be successful in this endeavor. However, they are valued pretty richly for a company as early as they are in their growth phase, so they will need to push hard to fill this valuation over the coming years, but I think they can do this. Now for what I'm doing. During the recent pullback, I have been buying Invitae heavily. Of course, I hope it does go lower in the short term so I can buy more, and I will take any opportunity to do so. I will be especially excited if it gets to around the $6 billion market cap range, which is about $28 a share. And at that price, I'd really load the boat. Thanks for watching. What do y'all think of Invitae long term? What's your 2031 price target? Are you buying on this pullback? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you learned something today, and have a great rest of your day.